temperature across the nation, including Kathmandu Valley, has plummeted due to a cold spell triggered by winter rains and snow affecting general life. It has rained quite heavily in many places across the country, with many hilly regions receiving thick snow, while there is more rain in the forecast until today. The surrounding hills in Kathmandu Valley were also blanketed with snow yesterday, while places inside the valley also witnessed slight snowfall. Good morning, I'm Sarah Sapsanama, and these are the headlines of the hour. The ruling coalition finds itself divided on the MCC agenda. The Bali Congress to table the MCC bill at the parliament. Maori Centre and Unified Socialists to prolong the issue till elections. The Rasua and Tatupani transits, the doorway to trade transactions with China, remains stalled for the past two years. Lack of serious efforts to ease trades to the fore. A study conducted by researchers led by the University of Maine in the U.S. finds climate change is causing the highest glacier on Mount Everest to melt at a rapid pace. And Manchester United crash out of the fourth round of FA Cup after suffering an 8-7 defeat in penalties against Middlesbrough. Nine people were killed and 23 others injured in two separate road accidents last night. Six people were killed on the spot when a jeep returning from a wedding in Lung of Nobahini, Bhutan, carrying the bride, met with an accident in Okarpata. The deceased have yet to be identified. Seven others were injured in the accident. The injured at, are receiving treatment at District Hospital, Bijuar. Meanwhile, three people were killed and 16 others were injured in an accident that took place in Sunsari's Pulchog on the East Waste Highway last night. Two bus passengers and a person traveling in the truck were killed on the spot when the bus heading to west and the truck heading east collided head-on and caught fire. The deceased have yet to be identified. Province 1 Traffic Police Office Itahari has informed that the injured are being treated at Inarua Hospital. Moving on, the ruling alliance finds itself divided into two factions over the now infamous Millennium Challenge Corporation, Nepal Pact. Nepali Congress has officially stated that the MCC bill should be taken to the parliament, irrespective of approval or not. In the meantime, CPN Maui Center and CPN Unified Socialists have adopted a strategy of pushing the bill till the elections. In the face of an ever-eluding consensus among the ruling alliance on the agenda, the ruling Nepali Congress has reached a mindset to table the bill at the parliament for its ratification. Stating that the party is prepared to accept the rejection of the compact, it has sought support from its alliance partners for parliamentary ratification of the compact. However, coalition partners CPN Maui Center and CPN Unified Socialists have stated that the parliament has no moral right to decide on the MCC in the absence of a political consensus. The two parties have instead proposed of parliamentary presentation of the compact only after the completion of elections of all three tiers of the government. Meanwhile, coalition partner Janata Samazwadi party has so far adopted an indifferent stand on the project. As the main ruling partners, Nepali Congress, Sipin Maui Center and Sipin Unified Socialists remain firm in their respective stand. Analysts have speculated that a possible rift in the coalition cannot be ruled out. The Rasua and Tatupani transits, the doorway to export and import with northern neighbor China, have been halted for the past two years ever since the onset of the coronavirus pandemic. Meanwhile, minimal government efforts have been initiated to ease business transactions between the two countries. China covers 14% of Nepal's business market. As per the data, till mid-January of the ongoing fiscal year, of the goods imported worth 1 trillion rupees, a total of 145 billion rupees were from China. The import from Tatopani and Raswagadi, which was 20% before the pandemic, has now shrunk to 14%. The use of this transit would not just lessen the freight cost, but would also make imports faster and bring cargo in less than 15 days. The same process through Kolkata, India, takes at least 45 days to reach Nepal. However, the Tatopani and Raswagari transits considered easy route for Nepali businesses has remained obstructed for the past two years. Meanwhile, there has been little efforts to ease the trade between the two nations. Consulate General of Nepal in Lhasa and Lhasa Management Port had reached an agreement four months ago of importing 20 containers each from Tatopani and Rasua borders on a daily basis. However, only nine containers are entering from Rasua and seven from Tatopani border. 
China has been obstructing transactions, citing that Nepal has failed to implement necessary health protocols. Nepali entrepreneurs have been unable to visit China since the start of the pandemic, while China seems reluctant in trade transactions with Nepal. In the meantime, there are persisting security concerns raised by China at these transits. The country continues to reel against coronavirus as 16 more COVID-19 related fatalities were confirmed in the country yesterday, taking the death tally due to the virus to 11,794. According to Health Ministry, 1,602 new cases were confirmed through RT-PCR tests. Kathmandu Valley alone witnessed 745 new cases. Meanwhile, 8,425 were dish stars and active cases have now dropped to 56,457 in the country. The recovery rate stands at 92.9% with case fatality rate at 1.3%. 243 patients are undergoing treatment at ICUs while 51 are on ventilator support. Life has been affected across the nation due to plummeting temperatures as western low-pressure winds triggered heavy rains and snows in the hilly and mountainous region, while thunderstorms have caused losses of lives and properties in Madhesh province. Public in the highly high hilly regions have faced challenges brought in by the snow, including the stranded vehicular movement, while many other in places, many others in places, including Kathmandu, flocked to nearing hills yesterday to enjoy the snow. Heavy snowfall was reported since early Friday morning in the high hilly and mountainous regions of the country, resulting in the dip in Mercury. Tirathum, Sankhwasava and Tablezung in the east witnessed a thick blanket of snow. All flights of Sulukumbu were grounded because of the adverse weather condition. Likewise, regular snowfall in the past one week has compelled the local residents in bathing of Dolaka to stay indoors. Roadway to Lamosangu, Jiri and Kalinchok has been obstructed because of the heavy snowfall. With temperature dropping to minus 12 degrees, public life has been severely affected in Manang as well. In the Sudurpashtim province, the snowfall along with rain has halted vehicular movement. Passengers have been stranded on the road since yesterday, while heavy equipment vehicles of local levels have been used to clear the snow to resume traffic. Meanwhile, hills around the Kathmandu Valley have also witnessed massive snowfall. Valley denizens reached places including Chandragiri, Shivapuri, Godavari, Fulchoki and Nagarkot, among other surrounding hills, to have their moments with snow. The dip in mercury has worst affected senior citizens, women in their pregnancies and children. However, farmers have appeared enthused with the prospects of improved agricultural production. With the cloudy weather condition likely to persist, the Meteorological Forecasting Division has urged people to take necessary precautionary measures to remain safe from the ongoing cold spell. The division has meanwhile forecast improved weather condition across the country from Sunday onwards. In our public voice segment, we've asked local residents in several provinces why have provincial assemblies failed to live up to expectations. Let's take a look at what they had to say. it's time now for our segment Public Pulse, where you text us with your opinion. The question is, why has the government delayed in the official announcement of the local level election? Your options are A, differing opinion in the alliance, B, pending internal management, and C, trying to suit one's interest. The voting is on, type NEWS, select your option A, B or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. Time now for the sports update. The government felicitated champions of AVC Central Zone women's volleyball team yesterday. At a program held at the official residence of the Prime Minister in Balwatar, Prime Minister Sherbat Dewa felicitated the players with previously declared cash prizes. Nepal had defended their title by securing a five-set win over Uzbekistan in the title clash of the tournament held in Bangladesh. 
As previously declared, the government has rewarded the players with 500,000 rupees each, while the coach has been awarded 300,000 rupees. Addressing the program, Captain Aruna Shahi drew the attention of the government towards the infrastructures and requirements of the athletes. Prime Minister Dewa did not respond to Aruna's call, but expected better performances from Nepal in days ahead. Meanwhile, the government has also felicitated badminton's world number one player in junior male category, Shuttler Prince Dahal. Likewise, the government has also recognized the contribution of national men's football team coach Abdullah Al Mutairi with 300,000 rupees for ensuring Nepal's first appearance at the final of the SAF Championship. The government had announced 500,000 rupees each for the players and 300,000 rupees for the coach after Nepal had secured their maiden appearance at the tournament final. That's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.